a look at another failing attempt to kill the great MAGA king. The investigation into January 6, which started with one of the most humiliating and corrupt displays from Congress that we have ever witnessed. A one-sided Soviet-style congressional committee made up of seven partisan members who all believed that Donald Trump was guilty on day one and refused to hear otherwise from anyone else. While Alvin Bragg conceals, email, conceals emails destroying his case, the J6 committee neglected to release countless hours of footage, which dramatically changed the narrative of what happened that day. Lied repeatedly about Brian Sicknick being murdered by angry rioters, clearly a lie, now that we've seen video of Sicknick walking around, still wandering the halls after the mayhem ended, and long after being hit with bear spray just outside. Much like Alvin Bragg, the J6 committee refused to hear any exculpatory evidence. A true sham trial, which of course had no legal weight, just recommended charges, which ended in the predictable appointment of a special counsel. And after eight months, more than a thousand interviews and 10 public hearings, Merrick Garland, the most political attorney general this country has ever known, still does not have the guts to charge his political opposition with a crime. Why? Because in a real trial, Donald Trump gets to have a defense. But fake trials like the J6 committee are much more politically useful. None of this was ever serious. It was all made for TV nonsense, evidenced in no better way than what we saw with the J6 committee. All right, Florida Congressman Matt Gates joins me now. Good to see you again. So, so the J6 committee wouldn't allow Americans to hear the other side, the J6 Soviet style committee that we saw. Uh, and now Alvin Bragg is hiding emails that prove that his star witness is effectively a lying sleazeball. And I, I think that that says a lot about the efforts to, to get Donald Trump. The assault that they've leveled on the justice system and their desperation to get Trump has been really incredible to watch. Undeniably, and the American people see through it, about 54 percent of the country is the result of a recent, recent Reuters poll have indicated that they believe this to be a political prosecution. And we don't want that to happen in our country. Uh, we also are deeply concerned in Congress that federal funds may be improperly used and even that the special counsel statute may need some tailoring, uh, whether it was Bill Clinton or Donald Trump. Special counsels were appointed, and then very ancillary things became animated and a part of efforts to work against those two presidents. So we might even find some bipartisan agreement from Bill Clinton that what starts as a special counsel investigation yeah. shouldn't germinate subsequently in some ancillary criminal prosecution. That's uh, well said. You know, the, the committee, uh, the J6 committee, recommended charges against Donald Trump three months ago. We still haven't heard anything. It's been a while. They really were gearing at this outcome from the start. There was no sincere legislative effort from the January 6th committee. There was no purpose to try to protect the Capitol. The entire purpose of that committee forming was to send a criminal referral to an all too willing Merrick Garland. And now there is a special counsel. I'm worried that that investigation is uh, violating civil rights. Uh, I'm worried that that investigation is predicated on improper work product. I'm probably, my Dan Bishop and I are probably the only Republicans that have gone through the January 6th committee's work, it's crazy how they targeted people's bank records and phone records with such particularity. You can see when Bernie Carrick bought a $7 coffee from McDonald's, for goodness sakes, and now they're handing that information off to Jack Smith with the hopes of using the criminal process to achieve objectives that they cannot achieve at the ballot box. It is something. You and five colleagues introduced legislation this week to halt spending toward a brand new FBI headquarters. I can't imagine why you think the FBI doesn't want a new home or doesn't deserve a new home. A $375 million complex larger than the Pentagon is what Nancy Pelosi approved in the lame duck Congress. I believe this Republican majority should claw that back. All of the rot that we see at the FBI can pretty much be traced back to where I'm sitting now in Washington, D.C., or where you're sitting in New York. We have brave FBI agents who do great work all around the country. They're not part of the problem. The problem is political capture of the FBI, and it is nuts to take an entity that is about 2.5% of the United States military and give them an operation center here in the Washington area larger than the Pentagon. We ought to do something about that. It's astonishing what we spend our money on. 
Congressman Matt Gates, thank you so much, and thank you for your help and support getting us back onto DirecTV as well. We really do appreciate that. Thank you. Glad to have you back. My parents are thrilled. <laughs>